Hey guys, it's Angela from the App Brewery, and in this lesson, we're going to deep dive into how exactly does the internet work? So what exactly is the internet? A lot of people think it's a cloud, something that's hanging around in the sky. It's super complex, super difficult to understand, but actually that's not it at all. The internet is pretty simple. All it is, is just a long piece of wire and wire connects different computers to each other. So you might have one computer that's in London and another one that's in Seattle, and they can talk to each other and transfer data through this giant wire. Now, some of these computers attached to the internet have a very special job. They have to be online 24 seven, ready to serve you all the data and files that you are requesting when you try to access a website. And these are called servers. And what they do is they serve you all the data and files you need to be able to access and interact with certain websites. So these computers are called servers and any computer that a user would use to access the internet is called a client. Now you can imagine a web server as a giant library that's open 24 seven and you can go in there at any hour of the day and say, I want to see Google's homepage or I want to see the latest posts on TechCrunch and would be able to serve you with all the files and data you would need to be able to view whatever website you want. Now, as you can imagine, if there's a library that's big enough to house all of these websites, then it's going to be pretty difficult to quickly locate the thing that you want out of this giant library, right? So how is this problem solved on the internet? Well, let's say that you're sitting at home on your computer and you type in google.com because you want to head over to the main Google homepage. Well, what happens behind the scenes is that your browser will send that message to your ISP or your internet service provider. So these are the people who you pay to be able to access the internet. If you live in the US, that will be AT&T or Comcast. And if you're in the UK, that will be something like BT or TalkTalk. Now, the message that you're sending the ISP is, I want to see Google.com. And the ISP will then relay that message to something called a DNS server, which stands for a domain name system server. And a DNS server is essentially just a souped up phone book. And what happens when you make that request through your browser is the DNS server will look up in its database to find the exact IP address of that website that you're trying to access. And every single computer that's connected to the internet has an IP address. It's kind of like a postal code for your computer so that when people need to send and receive files on the internet, each computer can be located and contacted using their unique IP address. And once the DNS server finds that IP address, it'll send it back to your browser through the ISP over the internet. Then you can make a direct request to that address. And what lives at that IP address is of course the Google servers. And they'll be able to send you back all the files and data you need to be able to view the Google homepage. Now you can try this for yourself to look up the IP address of the Google homepage. Head over to this website, nslookup.io and type in google.com. And they should show you the exact IP address of the Google servers that you can access. Now, if you try checking this on a different day, say in a week or in a month's time, you might see that this address actually changes. And that's because many websites, including Google, use something called dynamic IP addresses, as well as a content distribution network or a CDN. This basically ensures that it gets you to the closest server to where you are located. And also this address will change depending on whether if it's being used or not. So don't type in what you see on screen. Instead, head over to nslookup.io and look up what is the closest IP address to you that is currently being used. So if you copy it and paste it into a new tab, then you'll be able to replicate that process and see the Google homepage show up. So to summarize, the internet is just a bunch of wires that connects up different computers, but it's just on a much bigger scale, connecting up all the computers in the world. But what about the oceans, I hear you ask? Well, that's one of the coolest things. There are these massive undersea cables connecting all the continents on Earth. And if you head over to submarinecablemap.com, you can see all of these cables 
and see the ones that connect you up to the internet. And these undersea cables are massive, consisting of hundreds of fiber optic fibers, each of them using lasers to transmit up to 400 gigabytes of data per second. This is a cross section of one of the cables that run to New Zealand. It's an absolute marvel of modern technology and it looks really beautiful, don't you think? And to think that every single time we load up a web page or click on a button on a website, behind the scenes, we're sending signals that navigate all of this crazy underwater and above water wires. And all I need is just an IP address. And through tiny electric signals traveling at the speed of light through the oceans and halfway around the world in a matter of milliseconds, I get to view my favorite websites. And that is how awesome the internet is. And we're going to be taming it to build our own website and web apps. And to be able to do that, we first have to understand how exactly do websites work. So for all of that and more, I'll see you on the next lesson.